Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you to manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. On Wednesday, the markets got an incredible shock of reality of what's beginning to happen in the economy. Retail sales down 8.7%, industrial production down 5.4%, New York Fed manufacturing index dropped to minus 78.2. The housing index went from 72 down to 30. This is just a glimpse of what's beginning to happen, not what has happened. Folks that have been talking about we're in a bull market and markets going straight back up and V bottom, they are so wrong and they have no concept of what's being destroyed in this economy. I've talked about it several times over the past several weeks. Wait till we get to May 5th and we see more of this carnage, when we get to June, you're going to see the catastrophe that this situation is. It's not going to be pretty, and there's going to be a lot to deal with. You see how the markets reacted to the news that came out today. We're also seeing earnings reports to, to come out. They're not giving any forward-looking expectations, so we're going to be operating in this void of without any guidance. The street talk is going to drive a lot of the sentiment, which that can't be good. There's no guidance from the so-called experts. Even though every earnings season, I'm the guy that always is trashing the analysts because they get things so wrong every quarter. Those missed expectations help to set sentiment, whether they're right or wrong, or they just underestimate. Regardless of that, we're not going to have that as we come into the next quarter's releases. So when we come into July, we're going to start to really see what an incredible mess has been created. The administration keeps talking about pent-up demand. That's their favorite line. I think it's BS. I think they're trying to affect. This is what talking heads do and what the Fed is known to do a lot of times is jawboning the psychology back into the markets, in this case, in the psychology of the economy and all of us people out here that are being affected by these incredibly terrible decisions that have been made, in my opinion. The economy will come back, but it's not going to come back as fast as many think, and there's going to be several quarters of this type of action, and we're yet to see what happens when we start to turn things on. That's going to be the big element is trying to figure out socially how people are going to act. Is everybody just going to go back to restaurants and and sports games? Uh, one of the do, but it's going to be interesting to see how society reacts after this. I think it's been really hurt. We've seen everybody go into their little cocoons and stay in their spaces, and it's going to be scary for many people, not everybody, many people to trust to come back out. So there's going to be a transition period. One of the things that I've talked a lot about over the past several weeks is that we're really going to be in a sideways consolidation for at least another six, maybe as many as 12 weeks, which is three months. It makes sense because we're not going to really understand this crisis for that long. We're, we're going to have to see what gets turned back on, how things come back online, what type of activity starts to come back, so it's going to take a lot of months to get psychology back in the market that people are willing to start making bets. As you'll see when I go through the technical section tonight, there's just a lot of patterns that have been destroyed, and there's still a lot of downward pressure, which tells me the markets are a long ways from making any kind of sustained trend move. I've talked to you about this before. The important thing is not if you bought the low. It's to get in when markets have stabilized and we're starting to see some trends that are likely to be sustainable, it's very possible that after we see all the things I just discussed, we're going to see another round of selling will go much lower. And I've talked to you about several weeks ago about potentially going down to around 1750 to 1650 on the S&P 500. That's a long ways from here. That puts the markets down about 55 to 60 percent from the top. I don't know that that will be the case right now. But this consolidation phase, sometime in the next 6 to 12 weeks, I'll be able to nail this down on my expectations looking forward. Let's go in and look at the technical situation and unpack what is likely to happen in the last two days of this week. Okay, looking at the S&P 500, yesterday we were down 2.2%. 
pretty good decline. We traded down into the support 2670 level just below it at 2761. This is going to be a, a critical point in the charts because we're seeing two things happen. We're seeing we're seeing the continued acceleration to the upside of the 10 period moving average while the 40 period moving average is still declining. So they're going to cross and many folks would look at that crossover as a bullish sign. What I've seen over the years and when those crossovers happen initially it sets at least a reactionary high which suggests that we'll see a decline back down to test this 10 period moving average. Now this thing is moving at 0.75 per day on the cash but let's look at the futures for a second and I've been talking to you about this over the last several days. The futures seem to have a much better view of what's going on. Maybe it's because of the nature of the virtually 24 hour trading. But the 40 period moving average is 27.34. Overnight we saw a move down to 27.46 which was down about almost a percent, 0.9 and change. And now we're up 0.6. So we've completely reversed as we're coming into the open of London. So right now it's about 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Oftentimes into the open on London we'll see this rally up and then shortly after the first hour of trading in London we'll see some squaring up of positions. The London market doesn't have necessarily a great mechanism for pre-market so there's a proxy that kind of goes on. So there's some positive tone coming into Europe as we're, we're coming into the open. And so we could see this fade by morning. But today is going to be a critical day. There's going to be two key points on the S&P cash today. 27.95, we get over that level. Then the next resistance will be 28.08 to 28.21. If you remember, we made the high at 28.51 just two sessions ago. That could still be challenged depending on what happens today. So this is going to be critical. A higher close today above 2808 is going to set the tone for a retest of that 2850, which would suggest that the 2920 level is still in play. But the close today will be everything. If we can get below the 40 period moving average at 2764, then that will tell us that we're still in that negative mode looking for 2660 that 2525 level that I talked to you about yes in yesterday's broadcast. The patterns are still somewhat bullish. There's an underlying bullish tone. As we look here, you can see PPM1 is 0.75 positive, 0.74. The only negative is the PPM3, which is the longest term moving average, which is the 40 period on this chart, which is the green line. And that is still going down. So let's take a look at the futures. And you're going to see the futures are telling us Thursday will they cross, but the 10 and the 40 period moving averages will cross on Friday. They're in a, on a collision course. There's no way that's not going to happen. And that will set the tone for the next period, I would say the next three to five sessions. The only thing that will negate a short term negative cross would be if we close the futures up over. 28.24 and then going back to the cash for a second here on the cash would be 28.21 on the cash. So that's going to be your key pivot number. Close over that retest of 28.50 on Friday and possibility of going up to one more level before we see any kind of correction. So this is going to be an interesting point in time. Let's go ahead and review gold. It's had a pretty interesting, I haven't covered this for a couple of days, but it's got a pretty interesting pattern. Two days ago we spiked up to 1788 and we pulled back again. This is an interesting pattern from an Elliott viewpoint. Most likely what we're seeing is a potential 1212 when we're about to go into a wave three. And if that were the case, we're talking about a run to 1850 on gold and a possibility of going even higher. The configuration that we've been watching gold and the markets, they tended to go together somewhat and it's kind of weird. They're correlated then they're non-correlated. The way the cash flows are going into this market is pretty strange and it's a very unorthodox pattern but it does look like the potential for a 1-2-1-2. Weekly we're right on the top end resistance right now. Resistance 
one is 1786 and we've been up to 1788 so it's hit that that resistance level which suggests we've probably seen the range for this week but with two more sessions to go if it breaks above that number next number just on this weekly range is 1823 then 1860 we could explode up to these levels so the the key level on the downside in gold is going to be 1730 so there's about a 20 dollar risk but this is potentially a very explosive pattern it could come back in but the uh, close above the high of yesterday which is 1759 will confirm this there's a good 70 to 100 dollar run in this one i just want to make a quick comment thanks for all of you that watched the live stream i've actually taken it down we're editing it trying to see if there's some really good segments in there quite a few of you i think there's about 800 views so anyway we're taking a look at that that video try to pull some real gems out of that but thank you so much for participating remember to subscribe like and share these videos thanks so much for watching